If somebody ever tells you that saturated fats are a problem, it's high time you start running from those type of people because the people who encourage you to use vegetable or seed oils are the ones who are leading you into inflammation and all these conditions. Insulin is the leading cause of inflammation in your system, is the leading cause of kidney failure, the leading goal of cause of heart problems. And insulin will go up if at all you get into insulin resistance. And that is basically because of carbohydrate diets. So carbohydrates are the ones that cause you all those issues. Animal fat will never get you fat. Animal protein will never get you fat. What gets you fat is that carbohydrate and especially refined carbohydrates, which are absorbed quicker. They cause you a spike in insulin. They cause you insulin resistance. And then you get into chronic conditions and inflammation. Advantages of animal fat are, one, they are the healthiest fat we've ever known. So they give us the healthy fuel in form of ketone bodies. Number two, they resist oxidation. Because they are saturated, they do not have a space of the double bonds to cause them oxidation under oxygen or under high temperature. So they are very stable under high temperatures. So tallow, ghee, all these can stand high temperatures when you're cooking. So they will not be uh, oxidized. And that's the concept of rancidity. So they'll not run rancid. And therefore, they'll not form reactive oxygen species that will start killing your cells, that will start causing those mutations in cells and cause you cancer. So basically, what you're getting into, and even obesity, what you're getting into is a danger when you're using that seed oil. That cooking oil that you have in the kitchen that is not ghee, that is not tallow, that is not sweat, that is not lard, that is not even the monosaturated ones, the coconut oil, and the avocado oil, that is not olive oil. Those are the ones that I call seed oils, the ones that you have in the kitchen that are not part of the ones that I'm just mentioning. Animals produce healthy fat. Animal fat is very healthy and saturated fats are healthy for you. Run away from that misconception that animal fats will cause you clogging of blood vessels, atherosclerosis, heart conditions. Those are things that we are over and we need to uh, get rid of that myth instantly. So consume animal fats in plenty. That's the reason why I insist on eating fatty meat and fatty fish. Now, in case you are a beginner and you want to start maybe intermittent fasting and combine it with exercise and uh, a low carb, high fat diet so that you get to lose that weight, what do you do? Number one on the list, if you're consuming more than three meals a day, you're already in danger because you're squeezing the meals. Remember, you need around eight hours to just get that food out of your stomach, start cleaning up, and then this food goes into the intestines. And before it is absorbed, it's almost 12 hours for you to turn it into energy. Okay? So if you want to lose that fat, that fat or that weight, then you have to start by actually creating a window or restricted feeding so that you create a window of fasting and at the same time a window of eating. So for instance, if you take your breakfast towards 6 a.m. in the morning or 6, 7 or 8, what you need to do, you need to push this as far as possible from the time you take breakfast. So you push it towards midday. That will start helping you to create a fasting window because that is a now intermittent fasting. And also, if you take your supper at around 6 p.m., then you start pushing it nearer than further. So as you move your breakfast away or further, then you move your dinner closer. So what are you doing? You're trying to push your dinner towards the evening than the night, and then you're trying to push your breakfast towards midday. So... As you push this one towards midday, that takes you, you're still consuming three meals, yes, so you're still having your breakfast, but you're pushing it from around six all the way towards midday. And maybe your lunch is here because you take your breakfast here, then your lunch here and your dinner possibly here, or even beyond, then that tells you you're pushing this towards the afternoon. Then you're pushing your breakfast all the way towards midday. Now you'll continue that way little by little as you adapt until... You keep pushing this towards midday until the time that your breakfast will come and coincide with lunch. That will make you that will make your work even easier because now you'll just merge breakfast and lunch and then have them at around noon. So once you eat at around noon, remember your insulin levels here are, are very low. So what you do, you don't want to spike them. So you'll make sure your 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 plate is full of possibly vegetables, high in fiber, high in water, and also they're not addictive. Then have protein diet then also have high animal fat because fats are the only food that don't cause a spike in insulin. So once you consume that fatty meat at this moment in time, or those eggs plus an avocado plus vegetables, all forms of vegetables, then definitely you will have this meal and also you'll have your supper 
which is coming towards around 4 or 5 p.m. So you'll have your supper at 4 or 5 p.m. and then your breakfast plus lunch at around 12 or midday. Now that gives you a very small window between those meals. But it gives you a larger window of few fasting. So this window of fasting is what we want because we want to stabilize your insulin. And then when you break that fast, then you have to be slow on it and you have to also control the meals that you're eating so that you don't get into a spike of insulin. Once you do this, then combine it with the exercise, you will be better. Now, as you get this one here, now you keep pushing your, your breakfast and lunch towards that angle that tells you at some point you'll have to match the three. Now you'll have one meal a day and that is the major target of all this. When you run, once you run to OMAD, then you are totally safe. Okay, because one meal a day is the legit way of maintaining that weight that you've lost. Now remember, if you're losing weight, maybe you're at two meals a day every day, but you're still intending to lose weight, and then you get to OMAD, you will have to stick to that for quite some time until you achieve all your goals. Then possibly you can do a two mad. but the most important uh, format here has to be one meal a day. So basically, what do you do? Number one, strike the balance between intermittent fasting between a low carb diet, zero sugar, and zero inflammatory foods. Once you do that, your body will start to adapt. You'll start absorbing nutrients in the adequate forms. You'll start even noticing how your body is adapting and how changes are happening. Then merge all your foods until you come to a place. You don't do this once. You just do it slow, slow as you listen to your body and to understand how your body reacts. And then merge them and have one meal a day. Then after you have achieved an OMAD, then possibly a prolonged periodic fast of around 48 hours and 72 hours. 48 hour fast to 72 hour fast. This one can, can come later on, possibly once in two weeks, because this one also will push your body to get into more fat adapted than carbohydrate dependent. Once you do that, then you're safe. Then you start losing weight. So what, if you've not taken anything in this video, take this summary. Number one, use animal fats to cook your meals. Drop that seed oil, which is inflammatory to your gut and inflammatory to your system in general. Number two, all carbohydrates, if you're intending to lose weight and lead a healthy life, have to go. Drop carbohydrates completely. Number three, no sugar in all forms in your diet, including fruits and honey. The only fruit that you'll have to consume here has to be an avocado. Number four, fasting is very important, be it intermittent fasting or prolonged periodic fasts. If it's your first time starting on this, make sure you have a three meals a day and then start pushing your breakfast towards midday. Push your dinner towards the afternoon until you reach a point where you've matched all of them and you have an OMAD one meal a day, you're doing perfect. Then above all, push a 48 to 72 hour fast every after two weeks. You can do it that way and you can push a 72 hour fast once in a month. Once you do that, then nothing else can beat you because you'll go into fat adapted. Once you're in fat adaptation, then definitely your body has understood the basics of burning fat more than uh, relying on carbohydrate and relying on glycogen. That is how you start burning that fat that is how you attain autophagy. That is how you start losing that belly fat and that baby fat that you just accumulated when you're pregnant or when you, you, before you gave birth. So that is how we lose weight.